In Blender 3.3, is it possible to create simulations using only geometry nodes? Well, the answer is yes with a new hack um, where you use two objects as buffers which take each other as inputs within their respective geometry node networks and then create a simulation like the one you're seeing on the screen. This is a reaction diffusion simulation that I made to test this technique and today I'm going to be stepping through the nodes to show you how it works. So to start out, you've got your two basic geometry buffers. The ping and the pong buffer is what they're being called here because ping pong, like a ping pong table, they pass their geometry from one to the other and make little changes along the way. So the pong buffer object has the most simple feedback geometry nodes network. All that does is it takes the ping node in as an object input and copies its geometry. Simple enough. The ping node has two different geometry node networks on it. One is the feedback loop with initialization, so a lot like the pong node network, but with initialization at the beginning of the scene. And then the actual differential growth network, which is a bit more complicated, and we'll go through that in just a second. So the initialization network takes in the Pong object as input and copies the geometry unless the scene time or the scene frame is equal to one, in which case it initializes to this curved circle. You could initialize it to anything. So I have the resolution set to 128. If I set it to three, you get a triangle. And if you play the simulation, then you'll get a similarly cool animation. Do the same thing with a resolution of 4 for a square, etc. Be cool to do this with the Blender logo or something like that. Okay, so now we can get into the actual differential growth network. And the general idea here is that you start with this geometry circle, you perturb its location by a small amount. Here I'm using a noise texture, which changes its position over time to add a little bit of variation in the patterns that you get. Then in this collisions, this all important collisions uh, node group, you detect the lateral collisions on the edges of the existing geometry to see if they are colliding with a different point of the geometry on either side of the edge. Um, you perturb the location, you resample the curve, and then you start the loop over and over again. And that's how you get this pattern. Starting from the beginning, we have the noise perturbation nodes. The core of that is that noise texture node right here, which gets changed over time by changing the location at which it is sampled. So the way that happens is you've got the scene time with the frame. I don't want it to change too fast, so I divide it by a number. I'm using 512. Um, I then pipe that into a combine XYZ node because I only want the location actually to change along the z-axis. Um, I'd initialized this Y channel to 100. You could, you could change that to anything. It could be zero. I just liked it at 100 when I was playing around with the actual network. And then I add that to the position of the geometry, pipe that into the noise texture node, and then I want the values of the output of this to actually between, be between negative 1 and 1 rather than the default zero and one that you get with this color output. And so how I do that is I use a vector math node to subtract 0.5 from each channel in that vector or color, which is a three channel object, very similar, if not equal to a vector, and then multiply that by two. So that goes from zero to one to negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 to negative one to one. Then up here, we've got the group input, which is immediately piped into a curve to mesh node. 
So we want to convert that curve to a mesh because it needs to be mesh geometry in order to perform some of the collision operations, which are all important to this differential growth simulation. That outputs a vector um, as a direction where you might perturb the locations on the curve or on the mesh, um, and also a Boolean, which determines whether or not you actually want to change the locations of the mesh points by the output of the collisions node group or by the nodes defined by this uh, noise texture. So you make that switch here. We've got another switch which controls some of the simulation conditionals. The two conditionals here, the really important one is keeping all of the points within this circle that you see on the edge. And then I also have an extra scene time conditional so that the simulation actually starts at frame 20. And that's just for the animation that I created. So then that's the other switch here. And then you set the position based off of your eventual vector that you want to perturb the output by. Convert back to a curve. Then you resample the curve, which is super important also for the differential growth simulation. Because what that does is it essentially subdivides the curve into equal segments so that as you move it, it adds new vertices which allow it to grow and expand rather than just stretch out and become a large mess of long lines. Next, let's get into the collisions node group. You may have noticed that my cursor is now visible in looking at the videos I just recorded. I realized that I wasn't actually recording the cursor. I know it's nice to be able to see that, so apologies there. Let's get into this node group here. So the general way in which this works is that you're taking any given point on the geometry and you're checking a certain distance on either side of it and you're finding a collision with another part of the geometry. And if there is a collision, this Boolean outputs to true. If there's no collision on either side, it outputs to false. And we also output this vector which points in the direction of no collision. So then in the outer node group, if there is no collision that comes out of this collisions node group, then you perturb the position of the geometry by this noise texture. And if there is a collision, then you're going to perturb the geometry by the direction away from the collision, or in the direction where there is no collision, if there is one. So getting into the details there, you start with this edge vertices node, which gives you the two positions of the two, ed the two vertices on the given edge. You subtract those vertices to get that direction. So this position minus this position gives you a vector that represents that direction. You normalize it to give it a length of 1. And then you're taking the cross product with the global up vector. So the vector in the direction of z here. And the reason I do that is because taking the cross product between two vectors will give you an orthogonal or a perpendicular vector to the two input vectors. And since we're only doing dealing with the xy canvas, the position of one of these edges is going to be just x or y defined by the x and y um, fields of that vector. So taking the cross product with the global z vector will give you a vector that is perpendicular to this one. And so that gives me one of the directions on either side. And those are the directions I want to check. So since I want both of them, I'm going to take one of the directions and just scale it by a certain amount because I don't want to move one unit because that would be pretty large at this scale. I'm going to move um, in, a, in the distance that is defined by this value which I set in the node group. 
And then for the other direction, I'm just going to multiply that distance by negative 1 and scale the output of the cross product by that. So now I have my two directions that I'm checking on either side of the edge. So I add those to the position to get the actual position in space because this is just the offset from the position that I want to check. And so I offset the position by those values and then I use the geometry proximity node to check the target which is the same geometry against the source position which we just created for both those sides and then I'm checking to see if the distance is less than another input value which I call offset and if the distance is less than that amount we know that there's a collision so if either of those are true then we've got a collision if both of them are false there's no collision and then for the vector that we're going to move in the direction of if there is one collision and one not collision um, we say that for either of the positions that we're checking if there is a collision then we want a zero vector so no movement at all and if there's not a collision we want to have the direction of the offset from the position for the point that we're checking. So we've got that for both sides. So that's either going to be this direction or that direction. Then we add them together. So if there's no collision on either side, then since those vectors are directly opposite to each other, we'll end up with a vector of zero. Um, if there is a collision on both sides, then it's just going to be zero plus zero. But if there's a collision on only one side, then you're going to add zero to whatever direction vector does not have a collision. And so then the perturbation will move away from that collision, which really is a key factor to creating the patterns that we see here. And to demonstrate that, we can go into the outer node group. And if I disconnect this vector output of the collisions node, you'll see that we quickly start to get a much less interesting simulation. Still, if there is a collision, you won't end up with overlaps because the position that we're looking at won't move at all. But having this vector piped in will create this sort of away from collision movement which allows the geometry to fill the space much more efficiently. One important detail of, of this feature is that whatever distance that you're checking in the, uh, with the geometry proximity node and this conditional it needs to be less than the distance that you're moving away from the edge to check the other geometry. And that's because if it's equal to or more than the offset distance that you're checking, then you know, your proximity might end up being the actual point that you're checking, in which case there's not really a collision because we're not checking to see whether that particular part of the geometry is colliding with itself. We want to see if it's colliding with another part of the geometry. So that's just an important implementation detail if you're doing it yourself. So hopping back out into the outer network, you see if there's a collision or not. If there is a collision, you're moving in the direction away from the collision, or zero if there's collisions on both sides. If there's no collision, then you're perturbing the geometry by this noise texture. There's another switch statement that, can, that says don't move if you're outside of the circle, so it keeps the entire simulation bounded within this circular area, as well as these two nodes, which start the simulation at the frame of 20. You set the position 
you convert the mesh back to a curve so that you can then resample it to get the growth in the differential growth simulation. And that is it. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. And if you're interested in geometry nodes and simulation and procedural animation, then this is a super exciting time for you and for me and for the rest of the Blender community because we're getting all these awesome new tools that they're just going to continue to progress and get better and better. And hopefully soon simulation will be part of the core Blender experience. I'm excited for that day. Uh, I hope you are too. So thanks a lot and have a good one.